in this particular video clip, we're going to look at uh, two concepts in American property ownership. The one is called adverse possession, and the other is called eminent domain. Uh, I've seen people from time to time mix these two titles up. So let's try to keep it clear. I'll try to be as concise as I can so you understand what adverse possession is and what eminent domain is. Uh, so let's discuss what is adverse possession. Well, in the United States, um, what is true is that a person, if they play by the rules, can actually claim ownership to somebody else's property without ever paying a dime for that property. That's called adverse possession. Now, I hope you didn't miss this by playing by the rules of that particular state. Adverse possession goes back in time. As a matter of fact, we need to go back to the, the colonial period. You see, there were landowners and there were, uh, there were non-landowners. And in the colonies, if you were a non-landowner and you saw a plot of land that wasn't being tilled or plowed or used, you could, like, squat on that land. You could uh, plant your own crops and, and develop the land. And if you did that for the statutory period, you could claim that land as yours and it didn't cost you anything. Now, the definition of adverse possession is, is going to be very similar to this definition in all of the states in the United States, although we need to tweak it here and there. But adverse possession is defined as a person's occupation of property in a continuous manner. Now, that's going to be really critical. It has to be continuous for a certain statutory period, a number of years. It must be exclusive, visible, Here's an interesting word, hostile. Remember, it's adverse possession. So it must be hostile and in a no notorious manner for a period of years as set out by the state statute. Now, provisions are going to vary from state to state. Some states will require that this squatter uh, pay taxes, make improvements on the land. Other states require that maintenance and upkeep be made during the adverse period. There are some states, and, and they're listed here, a number of states believe, here's what they believe, that adverse and hostile possession require that the trespasser be aware that he is trespassing, that they they know that they're squatting, that they know that the property doesn't belong to them, and that's required for them to get title to the property at the end of the adverse period. In order to meet uh, the adverse requirements in most states, what they believe is that the trespasser doesn't have to know that he's trespassing. In other words, you see, um, if you're my neighbor, and I'm not sure where the property line is, and I build my barn 25 feet into your property, and it was innocent, I didn't know. The question is, am I squatting on your property? Can I claim that 25 feet into your property through adverse possession? Now, there are other states like Iowa, Georgia, and Louisiana, and here's what they believe, that the adverse and hostile possession require that the trespasser be completely innocent. Like I was when I built my barn on your property. I'm completely innocent. I think this is important, that all states require the trespasser to have continuous occupation of the land. In other words, if in fact uh, you're, you have a second home, you never visit it, and I'm homeless, and I decide to go ahead and live in your house as long as nobody's there, and the adverse possession length of time is, let's say, seven years, and I live there for five years, but for whatever reason, I decide to go live in another place for a year, 
it stops the clock. I, if I come back to your house and squat in your house for another two years, you see, it hasn't been continuous. And so in that case, I, I, I think that the clock starts, uh, the seven-year clock starts again at the point in time that I come back and live in your house. If, in fact, the trespasser abandons the property for a period of time, or if the rightful owner successfully removes the trespasser, even temporarily, the clock will begin ticking again. That's adverse possession. Let's talk about eminent domain. Here's the deal in the United States. Um, the federal government, the state governments, the county governments, even city governments maintain the right, the right over everybody's property in the United States. I found this on the internet. Uh, I, I thought it was appropriate, but you can see that, uh, uh, I don't know if it's the pilgrims or who it is, they're, they're getting ready to land on the shore and the Indians are looking out and they say, I don't like the looks of this. Um, and what that uh, ship is saying is that they're gonna claim the property through imminent domain. Uh, in the state of uh, Texas, in Dallas, a few years ago, uh, the owners of the Dallas Cowboys wanted to build a new stadium. The problem was that there were a number of homeowners that owned homes right where the stadium was going to fit or the parking lot was going to be, and uh, they didn't want to sell. So the owner of the Dallas Cowboys decided to go to the, the, the local government and uh, to convince them that it was really in the public's best interest if they don't sell that uh, the governing powers condemn all of these homes, uh, seize the property, kick the people off, we're going to pay them fair market value, they said, and then we can get our new stadium built. And this is uh, out of... Um, a newspaper clipping. It's dated Saturday, June 25th, 2005. And here's what it says. Last week's ruling in the Kilo eminent domain case will be affecting Arlington, Texas residents whose houses are in the way of the Dallas Cowboys new stadium construction. The Arlington City Council is expected to authorize on Tuesday imminent domain proceedings against as many as 19 properties needed for the stadium and approve rev resolutions paving the way for 33 more condemnations in the coming week. You know, this part of property ownership doesn't quite feel so good to us when the state government can seize property. Actually, uh, these kind of posters were showing up in places in Texas. Uh, if you don't recognize that, that's the owners of the Dallas Cowboys, and it says eminent domain. It's the govern government's term for uh, giving me your house. Uh, normally, eminent domain isn't for a stadium, although it could be, but it's going to be for like parks or roadways or something that really is considered for the good of the community or the public's use. Uh, however, there's been a recent Supreme Court decision, and what that did, because uh, it, it's my understanding, what it was, was a business, a local business, wanted to build either a bigger building or a bigger factory or something like that, and there were homes in the way. And so the question was, would the courts exercise eminent domain over the homeowners so that this business could build a business bigger? It went all the way to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said, through eminent domain, you can do it if you want to. Well, what it did was it sparked outrage around the country. 60 Minutes ran a program on eminent domain. Uh, they had some attorneys that were there, and what the attorneys said this may be fascinating to you, but, but they, they said that they've documented over 10,000 instances of government taking property from one person 
to give it to another in just the last five years.